Hi folks, thanks for joining me for this week's still water tutorial. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to click that subscribe button down there. Your support's always very much appreciated. So, in the vise, what you see is a variation of the woolly bugger, the concrete bowl, the Pittsford pea, call it what you want. But green and black seems to be a deadly combination in the winter. So, without further ado, let's get into it. In the vice then is a Hanak H970 barbless hook. This one's at size 10, it's a streamer wave and it's on a heavy wire gauge. The bead that's on the hook at the moment is a brass bead, it's at 2.7 millimeters, it's a Hanak and as you can see it's a chartreuse color. The thread I'm going to be using today is the Vivas, it's the E15, it's at 8 -0. And as you can see, it's a, a, again a chartreuse colour. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to get plenty of wax onto my thread. Just rubbing my hands through it to get off any of the excess. And I'm going to tuck the bead right up to the eye with my thumb. And then come in behind and just catch a big enough bump as to stop that bead running down the shank of the hook. Now, th this might not be that important to be fair. Uh, it's just, for me, it gets on my nerves. I like it to be stuck into place so I know that it's not gonna go anywhere. Then I'm just getting a bed of thread all the way down the shank. And as I get near the point, I'm just taking another couple of turns. And what I want to do as I've done with so many videos now with long tailed uh, lures is build the bump at the back and I've had a lot of people saying to me oh what you should do is tie your tail on and then just get a couple of thread wraps underneath the tail and yeah you can do that but I just find it easier to make this bump at the back and with doing the uh, wraps under the tail it helps a little, but you do still don't get the same sort of effect as this. Once I've built my bump, I can come quickly back up to the top, and I'm now going to tie my tailing. So, what I'm using for the tail is from Comp Candy. This is the Black Jack Marabou. And here's a feather I've just taken out of the bag. And what I want to do is have a quite a substantial tail on this. So measurements I use is my thumbnail, my thumb to knuckle, and my whole thumb are the kind of measurements I use for Marabou. And that's just so I can get some consistency. And on this occasion, I'm taking my whole thumb. So I've just ripped that off the stock, and I'm gonna bring it together. Now, put a little twist in at the end here, and then you can just move that to the side and it stops your waist going all over the place. And what I want to do is with the bit I've just cut here, I don't want it to be right up against the bead. I want it to be slightly back, but not too far away. And there's a good reason for that. As with everything I do generally, there's always a reason. So I'm now catching it in the entire length and I'm going to bring it all the way back to where my bump was. Now I did want to do a kind of woolly bugger pattern come Pittsford P, come Montana sort of nymph and uh, I thought oh I'd, and when I had a look at some I just thought you know what everybody's done it so let's try something a little bit different. So to make my life a little bit easier while I'm tying, I'm going to wet my thumb and forefinger and just damp down that marabou tail. Keep it all nice and tidy out of the way. So to make it a little bit different, what I thought I'd use is some pseudo hackling. Now this is the 12 inch chartreuse packet. As you can see, I just put the black and chartreuse together. And what is pseudo hackling then? Well, it comes like this. As you can see, it's uh, two bands with very, very thin synthetic material in the middle. 
and it's the same, the same exactly the same for the black that one's picked up a load of dust off my bench but I've cleared that up and what what you can do with it is depending on where you cut this will depend on what length of fibers you get now for the purpose of this video I'm just going to cut straight up the middle which will give me approximately a centimeter on each bit and if I just show you what I've got now you can see I've got two bits at about a centimeter now before I um, tie in my pseudo hackle I want to just remove some of the fibers to give myself a little tag end there and uh, the reason for that is you don't want to trap in any of these fibers that's not required so I'll just catch in where I've caught my tag and then I can close down on that and come all the way up now I'm approximately three and a half to four millimeters from the base of the bead then all I do with my pseudo hackle is bring it round and you want it to flow back yep so it's flown back in the direction of the tail the first turn comes down virtually on itself and then what you want to do is touching turns I seem to have picked up a passenger there I'll get rid of that <laughs> uh, all the way up the shank of the hook now I've no idea why black and green is such an excellent combination of colours in the winter it just seems to work you know some of the great flies you know the viva some of the boobies I like to use they're just stunning black and green when the weather's cold and the water's cold it's just a colour that works so all the way up and I don't know about your side but I'm certainly not seeing any green threads showing through on my side now I will check before I finish this off but generally if you've got it right on your side I'm just open the vise up yeah looks okay it's right on my side so I'm going to come in front and then I can come over with my scissors just remove that tag end and you've got you know there's a little bit left here but you, you can use that for dial backs or any other don't throw these things away I just put them back in the pack at me and then uh, they're ready for something else next time so next then fairly simple I've picked up the wrong bit I've already cut my little tag here and I can just catch that in just behind the bead make sure the tag is caught in there tight now remember when we put our wing on sorry our tail we didn't come right up to the bead and the idea is I'm going to finish that with the thread so let's get a couple of turns of the chartreuse on now again same principle as the black you're looking to cover all that it's not as important because we're, we're using this lime green thread but I've just pulled that in to the bead and I've caught that in now sweep everything back get a few turns in front of your material and it just stops your thread backing off and loosening uh, and that's the same when you're tying any material in if you can get a couple of wraps in front of it it just stops it backing off so just remove that again got a little bit that I can save for another fly pull everything back and we're going to get a couple of turns just to start our thread uh, sorry our head finish and then to finish off simply come in with a bit of UV resin and your whip finish tool 
And this fly fishes great on its own as part of a team. Uh, I know guys that tie these up uh, competition legal and fish them in the middle even. Uh, not, not a pattern I like to fish in the middle but you know each to their own and some of them are very successful anglers so who am I to argue. Just got a wee bit there I didn't want. Then come in with your UV pen and cure off the rest. So it's a, it's a variation on a very old theme, you know, the Concrete Bowl, the Pittsford P, the Montana Nymph, they're, you know, they're all much in a muchness really, and uh, I'm sure the Fly Time Police will be along to slate me for that, but there you go, that's something a little bit different. I hope you enjoyed it, uh, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all next time.